G'day everyone and welcome back to NS2 HD. In this video I'm going to be walking you through the basics of the NS2 resource system. It's a lot different and a lot more confusing than the original NS1 system, but it's also a lot more capable and it's going to introduce a lot of new gameplay mechanics. Now the resource system is not quite complete yet and it's uh, a bit buggy, mainly because the construction system is a little bit buggy, but nevertheless I'm going to walk you through it and hopefully give you a good understanding of how it basically works. Now, when you jump into a command view, as I've jumped into the alien view, you'll notice there's three numbers at the top of the screen. There is a blue circle number, which is plasma, there is a green circle number, which is carbon, and there is a number of extractors that you have at any one time. So there are two resources, plasma, plasma and carbon. Plasma and carbon are used for two different things. Carbon is used for constructing pretty much everything that a commander can construct, and plasma is used for almost everything else. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean now. If I bring this drifter down the tram line and tell him to build a harvester on this resource node, I'm going to lose 10 carbon in return for him turning into a resource node. So as you can see, it dropped from 52 to 42, and he morphed into a resource node. So that's pretty simple. And the same thing applies if I build something bigger. Say if I build a hive on this tech point, it's going to cost me, I think, around 25 carbon. He's going to morph into a hive, and I'm going to lose it. As you can see, drop down to 23. So the commander has his resource carbon to create structures. As for plasma, I'll demonstrate that now. If I want to create a drifter as a commander, I'm going to lose plasma instead of carbon. So a different resource is used by the commander to create buildings and create the workers that create buildings. And individual players also use plasma instead of carbon. For example, if I morph into a gorge and drop a hydra on the floor, you'll notice that my plasma dropped down to 9. Now there's no way individual players can actually see their plasma count at the moment. Of course there will be in the final game, but at the moment I've just jumped back into the hive to show you. So to demonstrate that again, I'll drop it hive up, jump back into the hive and drop down to 6. So individual players use plasma to build things and gain abilities and eventually plasma will be used as a limiting cost for morphing into different life forms. So as you can see I've run out, well it is actually sort of used at the moment, you just can't see the cost. I can't morph into a lurk and I can't morph into a gorge. Well, I can't morph into a gorge because I am one, but I don't have the resources to morph into a lurk. So there you go, I'm now going to move on to the marine team to continue the explanation. The two resources work in a similar way for the marine team. If I jump into the command station, you'll notice that the same two resources are up at the top of the screen and I have an extractor count as well. Similarly to the drifter, if I create a mobile automated constructor, I'm going to lose three plasma. Right away, sir. And Not if me. I take this Mac over to this resource point and tell him to build an extractor, I'm going to lose, I think, around 10 carbon. Yes, 10 carbon. Or if I want to create another command station, that's 25. And the marine team uses plasma in a similar way to the marines using it to buy evolutions in that they will use it to buy upgrades from, say, the armory. So if you've got lots of plasma and you run over to an armory, you could buy yourself a shotgun or a flamethrower or a grenade launcher or whatever else, provided you your team has them researched. Now to gather carbon and plasma, you obviously can use extractors and harvesters to raise the rate at which your team collects them. Now at the moment, harvesters and extractors give the team both plasma and carbon. Now that'll probably carry through to the final game. What's a little more uncertain is where else you can gather plasma from. For example, if you were to kill a, an enemy player, it's very likely you will get extra plasma for doing that. So the more kills you get, the more guns you're going to be able to buy, the more upgrades you're going to be able to buy for yourself. And that's very interesting because in the original NS1, the commander chose what guns you got and when and how many, and it didn't matter how good you were, 
the commander could still limit what you could get. But now that's all changed. Each player has their individual pool of plasma that they receive and only they can use. The commander uses his plasma to, say, drop ammo, drop med packs, create max, create drifters, etc, etc. And individual players can then use their personal plasma pool to buy themselves upgrades. So it's introduced a separation of the commander and the individual player. The commander and the player are still inexorably linked because the player relies on the commander actually to research the upgrades and build the structures, but a degree of independence has been gained for the player, and I think it's going to be good because it's going to allow individual players to personalise their experience in the game and have a lot more fun. But let me know what you think in the comments, let Unknown Worlds know what you think over on their Unknown Worlds website. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, I hope this has been informative, thanks for watching everyone.